<clears throat> My name is Dr. Ramsey from Oxford, uh, Ambassador of the Universal Peace Federation, and member of the, one of the members of the Muslim Council of Britain. I would like to say you are doing an excellent job. God bless you. Now my question, Dr. Zakanai, in your opinion, is Islamophobia a real ph phenomenon? And if so, how do you suggest it can be tackled? Does the responsibility lies with the Muslim community? Or should Western society be doing more uh, to breach this barrier of fear? I'm talking about the fear, all phobias are fear, fear of unknown. Thank you. The brother asked a very good question that is Islamophobia a real phenomena? How should it be tackled? Is it the responsibility of the Muslim community to do it? Yes, there is Islamophobia, especially in this 21st century. And as I mentioned in my speech, I believe one of the major reasons for this Islamophobia is the media. And I said in my speech that the media spreads several misconceptions about this religion of Islam. I do agree it is the duty of us Muslims that we should spread the true teachings of Islam. I'm aware that there are black sheep in the Muslim community. I'm not saying all Muslims are 100% pious, all are good. There are black sheep in every community, including Islam. What does the media do? They pick up the black sheep of the Muslim community and they portray on the media as though they're exemplary Muslims. What we have to do is we have to portray the right teachings of Quran and the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And if any Muslim is involved in doing acts which are against the religion of Islam, which, uh, which are acts of terrorism, killing of innocent human being, it is the duty of us Muslims that we should tell such people it is haram. There are some people who are being misguided and they have been brainwashed into saying that killing innocent human being is part of Islam. You will get reward. It's our duty as the mainstream Muslims to try and convey the right message of Islam and prevent such Muslims from being misguided. That's point number one. Point number two, it's our duty to tell the government of the country where you're living that Islam is a peaceful religion. And what I believe that Muslims should be part of the solution, they should not be part of the problem. The government should not think that Muslims are part of the problem, they should think Muslims are part of the solution. <clears throat> and that's the advice I even give to the police of India and the police of Bombay. And I interact with the police force very often. And I tell them that just for a few should take the Muslims in confidence. And the best is to have an interaction. I have addressed many, many police officers from very different countries. And we should try and have a question and succession and remove the misconception in their mind and prove to them that Islam is the one of the most tolerant religion. It's a peaceful religion. And if you know the teaching of Islam, surely the least person that, that you'll have to fear is fear a true Muslim. I'm not talking about the black sheep of the Muslim community. Hope that answers the question. I'm Yasmin, I'm a student at the university, and my question is sort of related to the last question. Um, you talked about you wanted to come to the UK because you wanted to reach out to Muslims who you felt that the government were not able to reach out to. And I wondered why, in your opinion, you felt that the government were failing in this way to reach out to Muslims in Britain. Just as a question that I wanted to come to UK to reach out to those Muslims who the government could not reach out. Sister, there's a slight confusion. <clears throat> I said, Charles Farr, 
the director general of the office of security and counter terrorism felt that i could reach out to those muslims who the government could not reach out to he felt that not me and i think again because of the information which the home department has that peace tv is the most popular islamic satellite channel in uk watched by the muslims as well as the non muslim and the most popular speaker according to the home department not according to me according to the home department is dr zakir naik so i i repeated what he thought he thought that i could reach better maybe he thinks that my speeches have influence and he may have read my speeches in context that the reason he was not in favor of the home secretary that she passed the exclusion order hope that answers the question Do you think that he has a point? Do you think that, um, in some sense, the government are failing to reach out to Muslims? Yes. Personally? If you ask my opinion, that do I agree with the thoughts of Charles Farr that the government is failing out? Yes, I do agree with him. I do agree because, as I said in my earlier answer, that the government should not think that Muslims are part of the problem. The government should think that Muslims are part of the solution, because a Muslim. there are many muslims who are british citizens and it is the duty of every muslim to follow all the laws of the country staying in as long as the law does not force him to do something which is prohibited in the religion or prevents him from doing something which is compulsory in religion as far as india is concerned i do not know of any rule or any law in the constitution which forces a muslim in india to do something which is prohibited neither does it prevent me from doing something which is compulsory so i i am a practicing muslim and i am proud to be an indian so i am proud to be an indian muslim similarly there are many britishers who i feel may be feeling the same they may be muslims and they may be following the laws of the country so the british muslims so i feel that the government should take in confidence and what they should do that they should see to it that this maligning by the media should stop and the best example best example is myself i mean there are many there are 100 million viewers of peace tv and there are millions of people who who tell that i am the ambassador for peace they say i am a peaceful person there are many heads of states of several foreign country many they have called me at the state guest so do you mean to say all these state guests of several countries the president the prime minister the king the sheikh they meet me they have dinner do you mean to say they are meeting a person who is promoting terrorism a person who spreads hate so what i'm saying that this is all again manipulated by the media so the government should not fall prey to the media and take any decision hastily what they should do they should give a chance for the person to clarify and then i'm sure that most of the misconception will be removed and i'm sure that uk would be a more peaceful country to live in hope that answers the question Dr. Matt Knight. Hello and thank you. Uh, my name is John. I'm a doctoral student here at Oxford and I'm from the USA. My question has to do with persecution, specifically how former Muslims are sometimes killed if they have chosen to leave Islam, uh deciding that another religion is more true. For example, my girlfriend is Turkish and she lives in Turkey. She used to be Muslim, but decided to become a Christian after understanding Jesus in in a new way. as god may flush she has had fears in the past that she may be harmed or even killed for her decision in light of the recent attention to this matter in pakistan uh with miss bibi and the blasphemy laws my question is this what are you doing or what do you plan to do to educate muslims that if someone chooses to leave islam that person should not be killed Well, that's a very important question, 
and he said that what if a person who's practicing Islamic faith changes to any other faith? Is it required that he should be killed? And all these articles that came about me, a preacher of hate, one of the point was that Dr. Zakir prescribes death penalty for those Muslims who leave their faith and they profess any other faith. Again, these reports were out of context. They took up a portion of my speech where I said that many scholars say that a Muslim who leaves this faith and professes any other religion, death penalty is the punishment. But I went on to further say that death penalty is not a standard punishment for any Muslim who leaves this faith and professes any other religion. I gave the example that one during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, there was a Muslim who converted to another faith and had done some wrong deed for which the Prophet had told they should be put to death. But later on, when Hazrat Usman, may Allah be pleased with him, he approached the Prophet and said that the man should be forgiven. The Prophet pardoned him. This incident proves that death penalty is not the standard rule for any Muslim who changes his faith. If he does some act which requires to be punished by death, depending upon the act he has done. But according to Islam and according to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon, according to me, death penalty is not the standard rule for any Muslim who changes his faith and professes any other religion. And that's what I've told in my talks. But unfortunately what they do, they pick up a portion of my speech from the YouTube and they show it to the Home Secretary and the Home Secretary believes it. What you have to see is in context. I don't give any... Uh, one more example I'd like to give that the moment I was banned in UK I was supposed to travel to Toronto Canada immediately when the ban was effected even my visa for Canada was cancelled they also had a five-year visa and I heard on the Toronto news it says here the preacher of the the preacher of hate hear what he says and then they show my clipping that when you beat your wife don't beat on the face point number one when you beat, you should not leave a mark on the body. Finish. Now they are showing a clipping, a portion of my answer. Anyone who hears these two statements, when you beat your wife, don't beat on the face. When you beat, you do not leave a mark on the body. It will, a person would think that Zakir is showing how to beat your wife without leaving a mark. It was a portion of my answer. When a non-Muslim asked the question, that doesn't the Quran say, that you should beat your wife and I said the Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 34 it says that when your wife is disloyal to you first you admonish her point number one admonish her first then you stop talking to her then stop sharing her bed then you can beat her lightly the Arabic word is Daraba and when someone asked Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, the companion of the Prophet, he said it means like beating with a toothbrush. And further the commentary says, so the Prophet said, when you beat your wife, you should not beat on the face, point number one. Beat her in such a way that there's no mark left on the body. So this part was shown and I continued. Islam and Quran never suggest wife bashing. It means you should beat with the toothbrush lightly. In modern terminology, I said beating with a handkerchief. Just a symbolic beating, such that you don't beat on the face, even a symbolic beating, and don't beat in a way in which there's no mark left on the body. That means it's an admonition. It's just a symbolic beating. So they cut off all the portion and show only two sentences of mine, and they promote that Zakir is a person who's against women. So these things were also done regarding the death penalty for a person who changes the faith from Islam but as I told you in Islam the standard rule is not death penalty for a Muslim who changes his faith to any other religion hope that answers the question